The expression, as busy as a bee, would be considered an insult if used to describe anything but a honeybee, for nothing is as busy as this bee. Honeybees live in a specially built honeycomb built from many hexagonal cells, which are not only very strong, but provide the most space for the least amount of wall construction. They have a complicated and sophisticated social structure. The division of labor among the workers is clearly divided between guards and workers who build the combs and are gatherers of nectar and pollen. It's a new day, and the honeybees need to get out and do what they do best. The majority of bees in a hive have the job of harvesting pollen and gathering nectar for the colony. One of these gathering trips can take a bee as much as 22 kilometers away from the hive, and this distance is covered at a speed of 24 kilometers an hour. The middle section of the bee's hind leg is enlarged and surrounded with long hairs to form a basket into which it puts pollen. When the worker bee has filled her tanks, she returns to the hive. Here she regurgitates her bounty into the storage cells using the pumping action of her body. These are then capped using a wax made by eight paired glands on the underside of the bee's body. For every kilogram of beeswax made, 20 kilograms of honey is eaten. Bees communicate with each other in the form of a dance, different movements of this dance for different messages. They also use smell to pass messages between each other. The queen is not entirely the boss and it is the workers who seem to have the final say over her movements. They stop her from going into certain areas of the hive, particularly the honey storage, where the warmth from her body might interfere with the production of capped honey cells. The queen is just a baby-making machine. Her only real job is to lay eggs. In a single day, she is able to lay a quantity of eggs greater than her own weight. The eggs are fertilized by the supply of sperm stored in the queen. She only mates once in her life and carries the sperm with her wherever she goes. The nursery section of the hive can be identified by cells containing white, upward-pointing eggs. Just prior to hatching, the egg lets off or secretes a special substance which dissolves the eggshell. The small brood cells contain fertilized eggs, which are developing into sterile female workers. These eggs are fed on royal jelly for two days and then go into a pollen-honey nectar cocktail known as bee bread. Young worker bees are assigned the task of nursemaids and feeding the young. But the hive is in grave danger. A bee from a foreign colony has gotten into the hive in an attempt to stage a genetic takeover. The invader has bitten off more honey than she can chew. The hive natives quickly realize that she is a foreigner and wants to harm the hive. And they take action. The killing machine is harsh and merciless. First, the intruder is branded for death by the bee marker smell, which serves as a signal for all bees in the vicinity to sting in the same spot. The sting of the worker bee is barbed. Once inserted, it cannot be removed from the victim. At the same time, a poison is injected and starts to dissolve the casualty's nervous system. Sadly, to sting is to die. In the process of stinging, the worker bee loses some of its vital organs and death follows shortly. 
six or seven bees set upon a single raider. However, their sacrifice is for the greater good. Rather lose a few individuals than the entire colony. <laughs>